Lesson 9.5c, Volume of a Composite Solid. The formula for the volume of a prism can be used to find the volume of a composite figure that is made up of prisms. So we're going to use volume is equal to the base area times the height. To find the volume of this composite figure, we break it into two prisms. Then we find their volumes and add them for a total volume. Take a look at this composite solid. We can break it into three separate prisms to find the volume. We use measures around the figure to find the bases and heights. For A, we see it's two inches going this way and four inches this way. So we're going to use this measure with this two inches and we have two inches for a height. That's going to give us 16 inches cubed for our volume. For B, we're going to use this two inch height plus this one inch height. So we've got three times four for the base and a two plus one for the height, that's three. We're going to get 36 inches cubed. For C, we're going to do two times four for the base and use a two inch height. And just like A, we're going to get 16 inches cubed. We total all the volumes together and get 68 inches cubed. Okay, take a look at this composite figure. We have a box on each side with a little rectangular prism connecting them. We can find the volume of this composite figure by separating it into three prisms, A, B, and C. We use the measures around the diagram to find the bases and the heights. So we're going to find the base areas and the heights. A and C are the same, so we can find the volume of A and multiply it by 2. A and C would be 2 times the base area of 5 times 4 times the height of 4. We can see they have 5 times 4 for the base and a height of 4. That's 2 times 80, which is a volume of 160 for both. So that's in centimeters, because we see the centimeters here, and it's going to be centimeters cubed. For the prism marked B, this little one connecting them, we've got a 3 centimeter by 2 centimeter, and we have a 2 centimeter height. So we've got 3 times 2 is 6 times 2, that's 3 times 4, that's 12 centimeters cubed. We add them together and get 172 centimeters cubed for the total volume. The joined surfaces do not affect the volume. The part where they're joining each other from B to A or from B to C do not affect the volume. We can find the volume of this birdhouse by bringing it into rectangular and triangular prisms. So here we have a rectangular prism, here we have a triangular prism. For the rectangular prism, the volume is equal to the base area times the height. Our base area is going to be 6 times 5. We're looking at it as standing up like this. That's 30, and we have a height of 8. That's 240 inches cubed. For the triangular prism, if you imagine it either like this or like this, we have the base area is equal to half the base times the height. So that's going to be half 6 times this 4 inches right here. That's going to be 12 inches square. So that's the base area for the triangular prism. That's within this orange area right here. Now to find the volume of the prism, we do the base area times the height. So we've got 12 inches square times a height of 8, that would be this height right here. If that's 8, then the height of the prism is 8. That's 96 inches cubed. The total volume is 240 inches cubed plus 96 inches cubed. That's 336 inches cubed. Here we have a composite solid that can be separated into rectangular and triangular prisms. For the rectangular prism, we do volume is equal to the base area times the height. We have 5 times 5, which is 25, and here our height is 20. That's going to give us 
500 feet cubed. Now, for the triangular prism, we're going to do the base area is equal to half base times height. So that's going to be half 3 times 5. That's going to be half times 15, or 7 and 5 tenths feet square. Now, we're going to multiply this base area by the height. And the height is 20. So if you look at this prism as standing up like this, or like this, you'll see that the height is 20, okay? 7 and 5 tenths times 20, or 7 and a half times 20, is 150 feet cubed. We're going to put the 500 and the 150 together for a total volume of 650 feet cubed, or we can say 650 cubic feet. We can also find the volume by imagining it's a full rectangular prism, then subtracting the volume of the triangular prism. What if this side came all the way out to here and then down, and this side did the same thing, it came all the way out and then down, and we had one big bar, one big rectangular prism, then we could take away the triangular prism that's missing. We would do 8, if this is 5 and this is 3, then that means that would be 8 going across, times 5 for the base area, times the 20 foot height, we would get 800 feet cubed. For the triangular prism, it would be the base area as half times 3 times 5, which is half times 15, which is our 7 and 5 tenths feet square. Then we multiply that by the height and get 150 feet cubed. We take that away from the 800, and we still end up with 650 cubic feet or feet cubed. Same answer, just a different way of finding the answer. So keep in mind, there may be more than one way to break apart the prisms. This one can be broken apart vertically with a prism here and a prism here. It can also be broken apart horizontally like this. One way may make more sense than another. We may come across a prism that needs to be broken into a rectangular prism and a triangular prism. Just make sure you're using common sense. We're finished with Module 9. We're moving on to Module 10, which is about statistics. We're going to talk about random and non-random sampling. When you're doing math, try to remember to use logic and common sense. Please join me for Module 10, and have a wonderful day. Bye.